eres sincero de dónde crece la palma yo soy un hombre sincero de dónde crece la palma y antes de morir yo quiero echar mis versos del alma y antes de morir yo quiero echar mis versos del alma Guantanamera Guanina Guantanamera Guantanamera Guanina Guantanamera No me pongan en lo oscuro a morir como un traidor no me pongan en lo oscuro a morir como un traidor. Yo soy bueno y como bueno moriré de cara al sol. Yo soy bueno y como bueno moriré de cara al sol. Guantanamera, Guajira, Guantanamera. de la tierra quiero yo mi suerte echar con los pobres de la tierra quiero yo mi suerte echar el arroyo de la sierra me complace más que el mar el arroyo de la sierra me complace más que el mar Guantanamera, Guajira, Guantanamera, tiene el leopardo un abrigo en su monte seco y pardo, tiene el leopardo un abrigo en su monte seco y pardo, yo tengo más que el leopardo porque tengo un buen amigo. Guantanamera, Guajira, Guantanamera, Guantanamera, Guajira, Guantanamera. Dilo, compadre. Good afternoon. Good, Good afternoon. afternoon, Professor Sara Raimundo. <laughs> good afternoon, Mike, and um, good afternoon, good evening, good morning to yeah, good morning to our, our European uh, visitors. Yes. Yes. Our, uh, this book launch is for on culture, art, and literature. The first of fourteen other books that will be launched for the season reader series of the International Network of Philippine Studies this year. This series gathered the best writings of season and published them thematically according to topics and disciplines. Um, this event is a joint effort of the Concerned Artists of the Philippines, um, Act for Peace, Para Lang Jose Maria Season, and the International League of People's Struggle. Hopefully, uh, this launch will be an opportunity to introduce the series and uh, broaden uh, the audience for Season's writings and encourage more people to study his work. 
And yes, in light of that objective of broadening the readership of Season's writings, we do have a Filipino translation of this webinar. So to start our program, we would like to welcome scholar, curator, and poet, associate professor at the Ateneo de Manila University, Dr. Charlie Samuya Verick, and he will be followed by the writer himself, Professor Jose Maria Siso. It is my moral duty to introduce to you what several states, including ours, consider to be one of the most dangerous living Filipinos, Professor Jose Maria Season, whose latest book on culture, art, and literature we are launching this afternoon. Last week, the Philippine Anti-Terrorism Council disclosed its branding of Season as a terrorist. But this is old news. Almost 20 years ago, in August of 2002, the U.S. government designated the Communist Party of the Philippines, an organization that CSUN had founded in 1968, as a terrorist group following the September 11 attacks in 2001. The European Union followed suit, listing CSUN as a terrorist by October of 2002. Why is the world afraid of Season, who has been exiled for more than 30 years, his passport canceled by the Philippine government since 1988? In this climate of fatal red tagging, the need to understand Season's work is even more urgent. There is no better time to read Season than now. To read him in our age of virulence is part of our obligation as students of history. The canon of Filipino nationalist literature is incomplete without him. Anti-colonial in provenance and internationalist in outlook, his ideas take pride of place in our political imagination. As must be clear, there is no lack of vitriol or slander where it concerns season. Just look no further than Facebook and the office of the president. I hazard to say, however, that season deserves the most serious attention of everyone. In 2017, he admitted to having written more than 30 volumes of essays and poems. His prodigious output shows no sign of waning as we mark the release of on culture, art, and literature. Why does this work deserve our utmost regard? First, the book captures the defining spirit of the early Philippine post-colonial state that saw the pivot of the US from a formal to an informal global power after 1946. The book surveys seasoned thoughts from the 1950s at the height of the Cold War to the present, wherein a new Cold War is emerging. The historical coverage of the book is significant because it traces the arc of Season's development as a thinker, beginning with his coming of age in the shadow of the U.S. grant of nominal independence and the rise of Filipino statehood, where an American imperialism shifted from a direct control of the colony to a cultural and economic domination of the post-colony from behind the scenes. Second, the book offers a unique record of Season as a poet and literary critic, presenting a resounding example of his rhetoric as an anti-colonial voice. A no lover of video game and a vigorous singer, Season's influence in the public sphere can be traced back to the ferocity of his writing and oratory. Such qualities cannot be divorced from his education as an English major. The essays in the book are a great resource for understanding his style as an anti-colonial and internationalist public intellectual. His voice demonstrates not only the appropriation of the colonial rhetoric of English, but also signifies the indigenization of the language and its expression in the context of decolonization. Third, the book enriches the radical tradition in Filipino essay in English. 
It builds on a body of work that consists of names as Salvador P. Lopez, Claro M. Recto, Renato Constantino, Petronilo Daroy, Jose Diocno, Alice Guillermo, and Idel Garcelliano, among others. What is the significance of this radical tradition? In the book, Cecil writes about the time he picked a fight with the chair of the English department. In this debate, Cecil questioned the course called Great Thoughts and asked why it included mainly Western Catholic authors. He argued that the syllabus must be expanded to contain the writings of revolutionaries like Mao Chetumu. Long before the rise of social movements like to colonize this place, Season had held the possibility of transforming the post-colonial university in the thick of US Cold War incursion in the Philippines. With on culture, art, and literature, we have one more title today to add to the bibliography of the radical tradition in Anglophone Filipino essay. One more reason to advance the Sildefer decolonization of the Filipino mind. In the face of a government-led red tagging, why must we insist on reading Season? The extent to which we can discuss his ideas is a measure of our asserted freedom. To read him is to defend the value of free thinking. The danger that Season represents to reactionary elements is directly proportional to his relevance to our time. Perhaps the worst nightmare of Season's enemies is to realize that for as long as our social problems persist, his ideas will live. As interpretations of our predicaments, Season's ideas impel us to change the order of the world. Mga kasama at kaibigan, si Professor Jose Maria Season. Dear friends, I wish to express my warmest greetings of solidarity and gratitude to all who are participating in the cyber launch of culture, art, and literature. I give my special thanks to the concerned artists of the Philippines, Paralang JMS, Act for Peace, and ILPS Philippines for sponsoring and organizing this launch, and to the book reviewers, Professor Lisa Ito of uh, Concerned Artists of the Philippines, Kiri Dalena, Kit Kwe of UP Content and Dr. Charlie Beric of Ateneo. Culture, Art, and Literature is the first book to be published under the Seasons Reader series of the International Network of Philippine Studies. I thank this foundation for publishing this book and planning to arrange my writings under the major thematic titles in the next two years. I hope that this foundation will accomplish its plan. I'm happy that this book launch is being held by patriotic and democratic organizations in the Philippines in defiance of the ongoing campaign of state terrorism by the Duterte regime. This regime of treason, tyranny, and thievery is already isolated and hated by the people. It hastens its own ignominious end by escalating the conditions of oppression and of exploitation and driving more people to join the new democratic revolution by red tagging, abducting, torturing, and murdering social activists, workers, peasants, women, youth, cultural workers, and human rights defenders. Your determination and courage are in keeping with the content of the book, which deploys and develops revolutionary culture, art, and literature with a national scientific and mass character in the service of the Filipino people in their struggle for national and social liberation. We are confident that the Filipino people 
will prevail over the current anti-national and anti-democratic regime, and ultimately over all the exploiting classes of big compradors, landlords and bureaucrat capitalists, and their foreign masters in the crisis-stricken semi-colonial and semi-feudal ruling system. We are also confident that the peoples of the world will likewise prevail over all the transgressions of the imperialist powers in the crisis-stricken world capitalist system and march forward on the road of national liberation, democracy, and socialism. Once more, I thank you and wish you greater success in the struggle for national freedom, democracy, social justice, economic development, cultural progress, and international solidarity for justice and peace. Thank you, Dr. Verick and Mr. Season. As a way to further the discourse of on culture, art, and literature, we have invited some critics to provide their reviews of the book. We would like to welcome our first reviewer from artist uh, and filmmaker Kiri Dalena. Dalena's artworks and films focus on injustices, social inequalities, and human rights. She works both as an individual and in collectives, such as Southern Tagalog Exposure, active from 2001 to 2008, and Resbak, Respond and Break the Silence Against the Killings, 2016 to present. She studied BS Human Ecology at the University of the Philippines, Los Baños, and 16mm Documentary Filmmaking at the Mowell Fund Film Institute. She is the recipient of the Ateneo Art Awards in 2009 and 13 Artists Cultural Center of the Philippines in 2012. Ladies and gentlemen, Kiri Dalena. Hello. Um, okay. Um, crying out to be born. The, incompar the incomparable talent of a Semaria Seastone. In spite of the relative freedom and comfort that I still enjoy, I will say without hesitation that our experience of one year of pandemic lockdown in the Philippines under the Duterte presidency has been harrowing. At some point in the lockdown, I found solace in books. I discovered the poetry of Alfredo Navarro Salanga, Carlos Bulosan, read The Revolt of the Masses by Teodoro Agoncillo, the story of Miguel Malvar as edited and introduced by Edberto Villegas, the stories of General Luciano San Miguel, Julian Montalan, the Battle for Batangas by Glenn Anthony May. I have always felt that I missed out on history after 1898 and before 1968 and thought that it was a good time to catch up. But matters came to a head when in April that NCR reverted back to the ECQ and we were reeling from the deaths and killings of loved ones. Even the books that I was reading failed to give comfort. On April 13, I wrote in a journal the days, weeks, and months pass, dissolving into a year. Skepticism over the scheme of things has taken over. Will the study of history lead me to an elevated understanding of who we are now? Have I emancipated my thoughts, forged my own tongue? Will the language being wrought through my brain and the lenses through which I view the world darkly now be made clearer? Is it in our best interest that we summon hidden demons from decades past even as we struggle with very clear and present evils today. The global health crisis has made it clear without a doubt that it is difficult to be alive now, much more for us Filipinos. At the close of each day, we survey our neighbors near and far and we see their progress against ours. We are forced to come to terms with the full measure of where we are, the tragedy of what we did not become. To finally have been granted the chance to read this new book of essays on culture, art, and literature by Jose Maria Sison and edited by Julieta de Lima is a welcome gift. The essays were looking at the same historical periods in the Philippines, but this time it did not depress. It connected past, present, and future. It uplifted and edified. It inspired us to aim higher. My first encounter with the writings of Jose Maria Sison was in 1996. It was, through, it was through a short essay titled Literature and Commitment, written as a message to the UP Writers Club on July 9, 1983. The essay was required reading when I joined the UPLB Writers Club, my first cultural organization at the University of the Philippines in Los Baños. I am thrilled to find 
this essay once more in this book of in this book 25 years later please allow me to digress a little to this day i do not understand why the older activists in los baños decided to invite me to a writers club i was no writer but activist fervor fervor and the youthful optimism made me believe that anything is possible today i am wiser and my prayer my prayer is for these scribbles that i did in the past to never resurface a similar sense of confusion followed since fall, has followed me since i received an email from Julieta de Lima inviting me to review this new book i thought that perhaps they made a mistake i was no writer much more a reviewer but then again julia is known for her rigor and so she followed up through whatsapp and then later on also sent messages through friends on facebook so here i am and i would rather risk being shamed than say no to the always noble cause of Julieta de Lima repudiation can come later on culture art and literature by Jose Maria Sison illuminates our present work and struggles as cultural workers within the larger and protracted context of national democratic revolution this compendium illustrates the powerful ro role of essays in driving cultural and political work and describes the incubation and timing of the second propaganda movement and the and the resurgence of the new type of national democratic revolution it it portrays the strength and necessity of continuity while underscoring the gaps the brutal interruptions allow me to cite a few of the many essays in the book that resonated with me the need for a cultural revolution a lecture to up students at, at the up baguio college september 30 1966 echoes the same questions that haunted me the tasks of the second propaganda movement also in baguio city on october 12 19 66 urging the adoption of textbooks and other study materials that are filipino oriented and progressive to co to counteract the hundreds of years of colonial imperialism and neo colonial mental subjugation result the critic from december 29 1966 introduced the pancit party uh, which i no, do not remember at all from el fili and is somehow inspiring me to return to these books by jose rizal the task of cadres in the cultural field delivered at the national first national congress of panulat para sa kaunlaran ng sambayan ng ng sambayan ng UP Diliman in December 1971 two very beautifully written um, essays about the university of the philippines the university of the philippines an assessment written on july 9 1983 which i loved not because it provide not just because it provided an assessment but also envisioned the dreams of semer season for the students for the teachers for the nation foundation for sustained development of the national democratic movement in the university of the philippines co-authored with Julieta de Lima in 2008 this this essay chronicled the process of building a progressive university with within the reactionary university and described how UP reeled from the anti-communist witch hunts from the early 1950s and 1957. I was particularly impressed by the story of how Marxist books that were ordered, destroyed by the military, were simply put aside by the librarian, unclassified, and only to be rediscovered by the students by 1958. It was also inevitable for me to find parallels in the red tagging that we are experiencing now. with the witch hunts that became the norm in the University of the Philippines in the 1950s it may be unthinkable now but Teodoro Agoncillo's revolt of the masses the writings of Claudio Mayo Recto the Noli Metangere and El Filibusterismo of Pesarisal were deemed threatening even if it was already the 1950s the author's note to prison and beyond in 1984 i really loved how this however brief it was and on cultural work among the workers on may 1 1984 addressing the makabayang alianza sa sining anak pawis or masa this in this essay i first um heard mention of films photography document documentary films and feature films even the dreams of making sculptures how i wish i read these essays far earlier especially when as a young activist activist we aspired to form 
Trimedia Organizations in Southern Tagalog. This compendium draws for us a guidebook, a map, a picture puzzle with missing pieces that have been carefully restored. This book is not for the generation of our fathers and mothers. This book is for us, those who came after them, and for the generations who will come after us. It is not a prestige project undertaken to make us fawn over the Jose Maria season. They probably published this for the simple reason of encouraging us artists and cultural workers who have sworn to serve the people to push forward and to hopefully never get lost along the way. It is straightforward and educational and per portrays the humility of the writer in the midst of his historical experiences and role that I can only describe as incomparable. I end this reading with a text from one of the many inspired essays in the book. This beautiful description of the mission of the Afro-Asian writer as set forth in the de Declaration of the 1960 Conference convened by the Afro-Asian Writers Bureau, which also closes Jose Maria Sison's comments on the Afro-Asian Writer Symposium held from January 31 to February 3, 1975. The Afro-Asian writer lives an incomparable historical lives an incomparable historical experiences, which places him in the midst of enormous movements and offers him the privilege and heavy task to be at the same time the witness and the active factor in those transformations. For there is only one criterion for the true creator, which is to be attentive to the anger and wisdom of the people. From the people thus respected and served will talent be born. Thank you very much. And congratulations, Professor Jose Maria Susan. Thank you so much, Ms. Giri Delena. Our next reviewer is a cultural worker. Since 2012, uh, she has been uh, teaching art history and art theory as a faculty member of the University of the Philippines College of uh, Fine Arts. Uh, she's also a member of the Young Critics Circle Film Desk and currently the Secretary General of the Concerned Artists of the Philippines. Uh, friends, help me welcome uh, Professor Lisa Ito. Good day, everyone. And thank you, Professor Joma and Julie for the Season Reader Series. Um, it's always an honor to co-present uh, and review one of the more important compilations of writings to be published during this time, um, especially in this um, period where the COVID-19 pandemic and political repression have taken very, very cruel turns in the Philippines and abroad. Um, let's, uh, I start with recalling where, when I first heard the name Jose Maria Season, and that was as a freshman in UP Diliman when I was also starting out as a new probationary writer for the Philippine Collegian, uh, the official student publication of the university. Uh, by the time, uh, Professor Season was already long in exile in the Netherlands and engaging in peace talks with the Philippine government for almost a decade already. But that process was one which yielded very important agreements on the humane conduct of war, which continues up till now. Um, so it was at Collegian, but uh, whether they agreed or not with Kajoma's political ideologies, there was no doubt in my mind back then that different generations of faculty, students, and alumni clearly knew of and acknowledged Joma as a major figure in Philippine politics. That was ve um, very true for his um, alma mater and the publication that he worked with first as a student and later on as a professor. And it is in interesting and significant therefore to see how the season reader series of no less than 15 books uh, begins with his compiled writings on the topic of art, literature, and culture. He may be the country's most prominent uh, political exile until today. But that not, but that must, that does not, that does never, uh, that never erases his solid track record as an educator, as a Marxist theoretician, uh, as a poet and essayist who also loves the visual arts and music. Many in the arts community know and admire Professor Season because he is also one of us, as someone invested, long invested in the labor of imagining new worlds. Season's lifelong work as a poet can be found elsewhere, not in this volume. Uh, and to do that, you have to look for the first book, uh, his first book, 
titled Brothers and Other Poems back in 1962. Then uh, Prison and Beyond Selected Poems from 1958 to 1983, uh, published the year after, which earned for him the Southeast Asia Write Award. And lastly, the book The Guerrilla is Like a Poet, published in 2013, which compiles his poetry since the 1990s. This book that we are launching today, it offers us a look at another form in which Professor Season excelled in, and that is the form of the essay. It's a compilation of 60 public texts, um, starting mostly from when he started publishing his writings back in 1959, up to a few months ago during the first quarter of 2021. And all texts can be found um, across various public platforms and have been popularized at various points in their publication. Uh, it's a substantial volume, but this is no doubt that what's in here is not even one tenth of the thousands of texts, interviews, or even messages that Joma gave over the decades. But it offers us a look at almost 60 years worth of tireless work and thought. It offers us valuable insight and historical perspectives on art and society. That is, um, that is thinking that cannot be weaned out of pure contemplation alone, but by the collective experience of the people's struggle. Um, an experience forged across almost two decades of immersion in both the legal struggle, um, almost from 1961 to 1968, um, and armed revolution against the Marcos dictatorship from 1968 to his arrest in 1977, uh, during 10 years of detention, which included torture and solitary confinement from 1977 to 1986, and on ongoing exile as a political refugee since 1991, after his passport was canceled by the government. Since then, Professor Season would give lectures and talks on Philippine politics, history, economy, and culture in more than 80 universities around the world, and even collaborate with creatives and intellectuals from his homeland and abroad. Second, it's important to note that this is a compilation launched amid the, the malicious vilification of its author and editor, demonstrating how the past is not yet over but very much intertwined with the present, even in the act of reading. Uh, for example, one just needs to start with Professor Season's very spirited recollection of his UP days during the late um, 1950s um, in the first essay of the book titled Unforgettable Years as an English Major, where back then the enactment of the anti-subversion law triggered controversies which are very similar to the events prompting the Defend UP, Community Pantry, PH, and Taas Kamao assertions today, and which eventually led Professor Season to question the system that allowed peer and self-interest to thrive. Now, the first text that I personally remember reading uh, as a student were the landmark essays, The Need for a Cultural Revolution and the Second Propaganda Movement, uh, which both synth synthesized and drew a line of critical continuity between the historic struggle for independence to the struggle against contemporary ills in society. And of course, both of these stress the role of consciousness in waging social change. Now, among the prominent th themes which occur across the, the different essays is uh, one, how Professor Season developed and distilled a critique of the crisis in Philippine culture, which remains mostly unparalleled in scope and foresight until, and, until today. Uh, it's really hard to beat what he said about why things are so screwed up and what the challenges are for all workers across the different um, industries in arts and culture, whether that's in the arts, um, education, mass media. Um, uh, he developed a critique so comprehensive that um, cultural workers today need to read this in order to understand what is happening. Second, the essays, um, in this book, they lay down why we need a national scientific and mass oriented culture and looking reading through it, you will see how the critique and the, the need for that uh, and the call developed through time. The texts also offer very, uh, uh, the texts are also a very valuable resource which mark milestones, uh, developments, learnings and advances in cultural work that serves the people. The book today, therefore, is both timeless and timely. It teaches us that there is always a place for art and cultural work in the people's struggle, which happens here and everywhere. 
And in the next months, despite the situation, it would be really good to develop educational programs and efforts to study and popularize these writings, especially among artists and cultural workers, and especially among the basic masses. Uh, the book's translation into different languages and the parallel archiving of related writings and work will also do much to enrich and expand the present volume. And of course, last is the imperative of action. Uh, the book is important because it teaches us the power of both the academe and the archive, uh, where the classroom and library is both a space for political repression, but also revolutionary revelation whose potential extends far beyond the university, where all of it began. It's, all, it's not easy to read books like this during this time, no? um, uh, to finish a review during this period of the year, no? because there are so many COVID-19 emergencies, uh, community pantries, uh, tribute memorials to the fallen, childcare, online learning, many, many things to, um, to deal with in daily life. But we have to persist because to stop, is to kill the love for learning and for trust in the critical and collective response of the people across history. Uh, let's always remember back in 1957, the anti-subversion law um, was passed to clamp down on dissent. Uh, it failed. <laughs> and the dictatorship that, it, that, um, that um, these conditions enabled 15, late, uh, 15 years later also failed. And today we are facing a very similar law and situation. So Season's writings on art and culture, they teach us that courage is found by imagining the world that should be and in standing one's ground. And as generations before have done, um, we will fight fear and we will overcome. Padayon sa mga artista ng bayan. Maraming salamat. And congratulations, Professor Season. Ibig 
Salakas mo magwawakas on culture, art, and literature. A day with Jose Maria Cizan is a day full of culture, art, and literature. So this latest collection of Joma's writings is definitely well named. Pre-pandemic, on my visits to the Netherlands for meetings of the International League of People's Struggle, or ILPS, as you know, JMS is the chairperson emeritus of the League. I often had the good fortune to spend time at Joma and Julie's small apartment in Utrecht. Joma would often be seated in front of his computer, practicing a new song, or belting out, for perhaps the 10,000th time, only a slight exaggeration, I assure you, one of his favorite love songs for Julie. He was not always in tune, but there was no doubting his enthusiasm and spirit of the rendition. And he knows the lyrics by heart, often in more than one language. He's not stopped singing and writing since the beginning of his political career, as a number of collected works to his name attest. Classic political writings which any Philippine revolutionary worth their salt can quote by heart along with essays and poems, many of which have been turned into songs, recorded speeches, interviews, and even music CDs. This wealth of material has continued unabated even during his over three decades of forced exile in the Netherlands. As the computer and mobile phone has replaced the typewriter and fax, and the post office has been replaced in large part by Zoom and the cloud, Joma, with Julie's assistance, has adapted to the new media landscape, as his 10,000 Facebook friends' excellent website and numerous videos and online interventions can attest. I can't remember a day without a new Facebook photo of Joma with an admirer, or a sharp response to another disgusting statement or fascist act by Duterte and friends. Joma grasped the importance of cultural work and cultural workers in the success of the revolutionary movement in the Philippines. Any movement that does not wield culture as a weapon is dull and lifeless, he wrote. As a filmmaker who has tried to make films that reflect the working class and the people's struggles while attracting a mass audience, I went through this collection looking for some advice. I started with Tasks of Cadres in the Cultural Field, written in 1971, two years after the founding of the new Communist Party of the Philippines. Joma quotes the great Chinese writer Lu Sun. Fierce-browed, I coolly defy a thousand pointing fingers. Head bowed, like a willing ox, I serve the children. Cadres in the Cultural Field are like commanders who lead cultural battalions, the masses in their thousands, tens of thousands and millions, Joma writes. To serve the people now is to perform a definite role in the revolutionary struggle for national democracy against U.S. imperialism, feudalism and bureaucrat capitalism. The cultural revolution is a distinct yet integral part of the revolutionary mass movement. Without the preparation of public opinion, there can be no revolution. As a son of working class parents, 
I appreciated Joma's point about promoting cultural work by the workers themselves. In On Cultural Work Among the Workers, presented on May 1, 1984, to Makabayan Alianza Sasining Anakpawis, or MASA, an alliance of organizations of cultural workers based in factories and urban poor communities, Joma wrote, Cultural work is an important and necessary part of the working class movement. To be able to rise as the vanguard in the National Democratic Revolution, the proletariat must wage struggles and win victories, not only in the economic and political spheres, but also in the cultural sphere. In On the Tasks of Cadres in the Cultural Field, presented last October as part of the ND Online School, JMS is also clear that mistakes have been made. Overdependence on one or a few writers and artistic directors can prejudice the development of cultural work. Cultural workers must be conscious of belonging to a cultural army engaged in a cultural revolution. It is an army for organizing, arousing, organizing and mobilizing a great mass of cultural workers and audiences to defeat the counter-revolutionary cultural army that flings all kinds of lies and slanders against the revolutionary movement and has the advantage of controlling the mass media, social media and all the theaters of propaganda and entertainment. The proletarian revolutionary cadres have made mistakes in failing to do united front work with other patriotic and democratic forces in order to avail of greater human and material resources and larger audiences. On a more positive note, Joma continues, I've participated in so many webinars in this long time of the COVID-19 pandemic. The digital media can be a powerful and effective medium during and after the pandemic. Let us do more webinars on culture and art, and even far more presentations of cultural and artistic performances with a revolutionary character. And on that note, I hope you will present more revolutionary culture performances and will read and share this wonderful selection of writings as part of your work of arousing, organizing, and mobilizing. I certainly will try myself. On to the liberation of the Filipino people. On to the victory of socialism. Thank you. I will be reading the solidarity message of Professor Kit Kwe, creative, creative writer. The first volume of the Season Reader series is unsurprisingly about what Professor Jose Maria Season has also been known for, being a writer for the people. Although in academia, writing majors would have encountered his writing very briefly, perhaps through one or two poems, because as many progressive scholars have noted, our academic institutions are still the stronghold of the kind of art created around the perverse ideology that maintains class oppression. But then again, there are groups such as the concerned artists of the Philippines that compel our artists to sharpen their understanding of how much art and culture are an essential part of the anti-imperialist and anti-capitalist struggle for freedom. And there is Professor Season himself, whose prodigious production, speeches, messages, and reflections has been gathered in an important volume to contextualize that struggle, particularly for scholars and students. Season's thoughts on the work of culture and art due to Mao's exhortation uh, to the artists of the Chinese Cultural Revolution to utilize the arts to advance the proletarian struggle. And like Mao, he takes pains to diagnose the chronic bourgeois afflictions of artists and intellectuals. Mao and Season, in unison, advise artists and cultural workers to really study the experiences and conditions of the working class alongside education on the theoretical level. The point is to apply the already understood concepts on the understanding of social reality and in giving life to the people's struggle in artistic and literary works as organisms. The discipline of creative writing in the Philippines, which still has much of its roots and corpus in academia, will benefit from Professor Cecil's exegesis. Much delight was had by this reviewer upon reading his damning take on the art for art's sake movement 
that the arts community has unjustifiably legitimized. He writes, the propaganda of arts for art's sake is nothing but a minor exercise of bourgeois subjectivism and pro-imperialist liberalism. No matter how hard it claims to be detached from any class, engages in psychological self-titillation, retails anecdotes of political ignorance and cynicism, or makes abrupt mystical flights from the level of instinct and ego. Undoubtedly, our other colleagues in the academic community will also note Professor Season's commitment to Maoist thought and praxis. But in the conversation about the Filipino struggle's contribution to the momentum of liberation movements worldwide, I note how this book, painting as it does his personal history as an artist and revolutionary, alongside the progress of emancipatory Filipino arts under the shadow of fascism and U.S. imperialism from the Marcos years to the present, reminds me of the writing of Palestinian militant writer, artist, and refugee leader, refugee leader Gasan Kanafani. Kanafani was also a prolific writer and political leader deeply committed to the cause of Palestinian liber liberation. Although he never participated directly in the combat zones in the land of his birth, he was the face and voice of the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine. His clarity of purpose on the necessity of armed resistance against Israeli colonization and imperialism was silvered on the belief that it would be borne by the collective mobilization of the Palestinian people because of their decisive militant consciousness. From this proceeds his lucid framing of the pro-imperialist grotesque narrative of Jewish-Arab conflict as truly a liberation movement of people fighting for justice. His creative works, which include stories and novels, present the effective service that literature must give to the people, as Professor Season writes. Works cannot but gain significance by reflecting, enriching, and inspiring their people's struggle for national freedom and democracy. From Kanapani to Season, the struggle continues until the forces of oppression can lie, in the words of Jose Maria Season, in the wilderness of its own making, and in its own grave. Ang karaniwang sabi-sabi, matapang ang aktivista. Bayulente. Pero paano kung ang gerilya ay makata? Buong karangalan at magkasamang itinataguyod ng Concerned Artists of the Philippines, Act for Peace, para lang Jose Maria Season, at ng International League of People's Struggles ang kauna-unahan sa isang serye ng labing apat na panulat na magpapakilala at ibayo pang magpapalawak sa kaalaman at pag-aaral ninyo sa taong ito. Ang gerilya ay makata. Nakikipagpingkian ng pananalita, hindi ng bala, espada, Itak o sundang, iwang bukas ang inyong kaisipan. May kumakato, patuloyin ninyo. Hindi ito tokang. Culture, Art, and Literature, Season Reader Series 1.
Thank you so much for that fascinating presentation, Musicians for Peace. And uh, I hope that everyone was able to hear the powerful and super satisfying presentations rendered by uh, Professor Kitwe, um, artist Bibet Orteza, and cultural worker, filmmaker, Malcolm Guy. Yes, and uh, we also <laughs> want to acknowledge the uh, presence of uh, special participants in this Zoom meeting. We want to acknowledge uh, the presence of Ebon International, ILPS Hong Kong and Macau, KMP, uh, Kadamay. We would also like to uh, mention uh, that uh, we have in a Zoom meeting, uh, Lisa Massa, General Secretary of ILPS Global, Kapaeng Mariano of KMP, and Norma Binas of Philippine Korea Friendship and Solidarity. Now, at this point of the program, uh, we're holding uh, our open forum. So again, please uh, feel free to type in your questions or comments in the chat box. Uh, you can also do so if you're watching on Facebook Live. Yes. Hi, Kajoma. Are you yes, listening? Hi, can you hear us? Yeah, we now have some questions from uh, our cultural organizations. What happened then? <laughs> welcome po, welcome. Okay, so um can we have our uh, our questions now? I think we have a question from um uh, a few questions from um our participating cultural organizations. Do we have uh, yes, I think we're <laughs> We're about to post the, the text of the question so that uh, for the benefit of our live stream audience, they will also be able to see uh, the questions that we will okay. be tackling. So we are currently, um, our text is currently typing. Oh, there you there, go. There, there you go. Uh, Mike, should, should I read this or should yeah, I read? Yeah, please go ahead, Sarah. Um, actually, wait. Um, can you can you do it to say? Yes. Oh no problem. Okay. For the for the first question, Professor Season, uh, what is the role of the English language in the national democratic culture? How do national democratic uh, na national democratic writers in English balance their partisanship with their commitment to make their works as understandable to the broadest masses? And how did you manage this as a former English major? This question comes from uh, Artista ng Revolusyong Pangkultura or ARPAC. Professor Sison. Sa ano, pagsagot sa una, uh, pinakaunang tanong, ano ang uh, uh, papel ng lingwahe uh, sa pambansang demokratikong kultura, uh, lalo kung ano, tukuyin natin ang... Uh, uh, English language. Ang English language ay kwan, colonially imposed no? sa Pilipinas. Katulad na, na rin ng ano, uh, Espanyol. Um, si Rizal, uh, sa pilitang uh, nag-Espanyol siya ha? sa kanyang mga uh, essays at novela, dahil yun ang paraan paano maabot niya uh, sa pambansang saklaw ang mga edukado. Ha? na marunong mag-Castila mag, uh, uh, kasi ano naman, alam niya na yung Tagalog hindi maintindihan ng, ano, ng mga nasa ibang bahagi ng uh, uh, bansa. At um, yung Castila naman, sinadya na yung uh, Spanish eh, uh, hindi matutunan ng karaniwang tao dahil katekismo lang itinuturo. Yung 19th century na nung ano pa, Eh, pinag-aralan nila kung ano magkaroon ba ng malawak na edukasyon no um, para sa sa masa at um, ipalaganap ang Spanish language ngayon kay pa naman sa uh, ano US colonial period no uh, dahil nagkaroon ng public school system so ipinalaganap ng uh, uh, ang uh, English no so uh, definitely hanggang ngayon English ekwan eh Ang nakakaintindi yan ng lubusan ay yung mga uh, edukado na umabot sa tertiary level. May working knowledge yung nag-high school. Kaya ano, madaling mag-export ng mga manggagawa ng high school lang na natapos. No? Dahil ano, um, yung um, 
uh, kananiwang ano language na sasapul nila pero hindi masasapul ng maraming ano um, maraming Pilipino pinakaraming pinakamaraming Pilipino hindi nila masasapul ang uh, English pero yung ano Tagalog Manila based Tagalog lumaganap na ha? ang pambansang wika uh, um, yan, um, ang tawag diyan sa pambansang wika ay eh, Tagalog based pero ang, ta- ang tawag ko diyan ano eh kahit magdebate ng sino kung Pilipino o Pilipino bang tawag diyan basta uh, most most precisely Manila based Tagalog ya yeah? yung naging national language kasi yan ang dala ng uh, educational system at mass media so uh, walang laban ng English eh, sa uh, Manila uh, Manila based Tagalog ha eh? yung uh, kahit sa lugar dahil sa kilusang revolusyonaryo Um, napalaga na pang Tagalog sa alam niyo sa kaigurutan number one language yun Ilocano uh, number two English Tagalog Manila based Tagalog ano uh, liban na lang sa Baguio when you number three lang so pero dahil sa revol- uh, revolutionary movement naging number one na ang Manila based Tagalog ang tinatawag nating national uh, language ngayon yung uh, Uh, bakit ginagamit pa rin ang English ano um, uh, pagdating sa akin at sa ibang mga edukado uh, lalo na yung mga uh, gumagawa ng mga okasyon para magsalita tayo o magsulat ano yun yung medium na pinapagamit ay English lalo na sa aking kalagayan ngayon nasa abroad karamihan ng imbitasyon ay ano yung ano magsalita o magsulat para sa ano sa uh, uh, medium na English ngayon ang um, is ang isang lengguwahe ay isa lamang ano eh, kasangkapan o uh, sandata no ganito hindi ba ginamit ni, Kasti, ni Rizal ang Spanish bilang sandata para labanan ang kolonyalismong uh, uh, Kastila. Ganyan din natin, ganyan din ginagawa natin, ginagamit natin ang English bilang sandata laban sa imperialismong Kano. Kahit na ano, Kano ang nagdala ng lingwahe sa atin. Wala ikinaiba yan sa Armalite na nadala ng US tangan ng mga papat na sundalo. Pag naagaw yan ng NPA, eh siyempre gagamitin ng NPA. Ha? Yung Armalite na yan, kahit gawang US, para labanan ang ano mga kaaway ng bayan. Ganyan ang ginagawa natin sa sa ano English. Pero ano, hindi natin matatalikdan yung ano tanong. Hindi pa mabuti kung pag ano may lingwahe na ano sumasaklaw sa lahat, lalo na sa mga nakpawis na million bill na pinakamaraming uh, sa ating uh, bayan. Tuturin 'yan uh, at superior na ano argument yung ano uh, dapat Uh, paunla rin, gamitin at paunla rin ang sariling wika natin ng may kagyat na pagkakaintindihan. Ha? Iiba na yung lingway. Kailangan mo lang lingway para maintindihan mo yung ano, sinulat sa ibang bahagi ng daigdig at uh, ano rin, matuto ka rin sa ano, kultura ha? sa iba yung dagat. Gayon ang ano, uh, yun, ang, ano yun ang aking ano, posisyon. Uh, gamitin ang English tulad ng paggamit ni Rizal sa Spanish pero alam natin ang limitasyon. Hanggang lamang sa edukado. Uh, uh, sa antas ng high school for working, uh, for, for uh, understanding uh, a basic level pero yung ano na, pag, uh, nuances na ng, ano, ng uh, uh, foreign language na yan, yung mga nasa umabot sa tertiary lang nakakasapul dyan. Ay, ano yan, milyonan yan pero ma, malit na bahagi ng lipunan. Uh, importante yung lingwahe na makapakilos sa buong bansa at nakakapagpalaganap sa isang kultura na pambansa, demokratiko at makamasa o demokratiko. Yan. Ang walang ano, eh, walang uh, uh, ang, ang, ang uh, wikang Pilipino ang pinakasuperior ng lingwahe uh, para uh, ipalaganap ang pambansa Uh, sientipiko at demokratikong kultura at uh, yung ano naman eh yung mga local languages ano rin yan uh, language of immediate understanding din yan sa bawat lugar 
Uh, uh, pero ano yun, uh, kung wala kang pambansang lingwahe, lokalismo ay uh, ipopromote mo. At ang mabuti naman, cognate sa uh, yung local languages, cognate na uh, sa national language. May ano ba? Kaugnayan, no? At may pagkakaway, may iingat ka lang, no? Kasi may mga mga ta- transfer of meaning sa mga words, no? Kung sa Tagalog, dagat, ano? Eh, yung ano? Si, eh? Yung Ilocano naman, eh, darat, eh, buhangin. Eh? <laughs> Maglil, na, o, o bulong, whisper, ayun pala dahon, no? Eh, pero ano yun? Eh, karamihan, Maraming salitang nagkakahawig at nagkakaparehas ang meaning at nagkakalapit ang meaning. Kaya ano pa rin, mabuti mayroong isang lingwahe na kakapag-ungnay sa lahat ng ating local languages. Ayan ang masasabi ko. Uh, maraming salamat ka, Joma. Um, nakataas ang kamay ni Lisa. Please go ahead, Lisa. Salamat. Hi ka, Jo. Um, matagal na po kayong nasa ibang bayan. Ano po yung kahalagahan ng cultural work at ng sining sa mga migranteng Pilipino? At uh, kung makakwento rin po kayo na siguro ng inyong mga naging kalanasan dito, uh, syempre mas masaya. Yun lang po. Uh, Kajoma, merong tanong si Lisa para sa inyo. Narinig niyo ba yon? Kajoma? Mahalaga ang ano, uh, ah. sining at, kult, uh, sining at uh, gawain kultura sa hanay ng mga overseas Filipinos. Diyan ano yun? Diyan uh, uh, nasisindihan uh, at napapalagablab ang ano, uh, diwang pagka-Pilipino at uh, ang may laman, uh, revolusyonaryo. O kaya may makabayan at demokratikong laman ang ano ang uh, uh, ang nasa sining at uh, uh, na i- 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 sinasagawa sa gawaing uh, kultura ano yon nakakapagpasigla sa puso at uh, uh, at isip no uh, ng uh, ating makababayan uh, at sila naman ay eh, kwan uh, syempre nandiyan yung ano Uh, spontaneous uh, na ano ba uh, paghilig sa sarili nilang bayan at kultura at uh, pero mabuti mabigyan ng uh, daan at ekspresyon no? uh, sa kanilang uh, uh, makabayang damdamin e napakahalaga ang sining at gawain ang kultura isang uh, mahalagang pagbibigkes pagbibigkes sa uh, umunidad ng mga Pilipino at ano yan, uh, ganito naman, uh, samantalang nga ano, uh, isang line ang pinupromote natin, pambansa, demokratiko, at uh, uh, scientifico, ano naman yan? Uh, may linkage ka yan ha, sa, uh, sa international, pag scientifico sinabi mo, demokratiko, ano yan? Uh, hindi lang yung, ano, ha, uh, yung pagsasarili ha, sa pambansa, no? Uh, may ma, may kaluwagan pero i-sabihin sa tinawag kong iisang linya isang linya pero malawak no at mismo sa pam, sa terminong pambansa ano yan sa uh, bale tinitipon at uh, tinitipon yung diversity of uh, Philippine culture sa iba't ibang rehiyon no at ano yon binibigyan ng ano pambansang hugis no um, yung uh, Mahirap naman yung ano, may, uh, mahirap ang buhay na ano ba, uh, you'll be bored to death kapag ang, ang content ay eh, uh, lalagay mong sinisingularize. Uh, kailangan you concretize eh, and take into account the diversity eh, of uh, uh, the, social, the national and social reality in the Philippines. Kaya yun, know, napahalaga yan, yung cultural work. Yung, ano yan eh, puro speech lang gagawin sa mga pagtitipon ng mga Pilipino abroad, matutulog yan, magsisitulogan yan, eh, kahit na <laughs> kahit na yung pinakamagaling na ahitador ng pasasalitay mo. I know, yung ap, biglang apo yun ng ahitasyon ng salita lamang, ano yan? Hindi yan yun, hindi, naka, hindi nakakaukok sa puso, sa damdamin. 
ang kultura ano lang hindi hindi lang isip ang uh, inimpluwensyahan puso importante yung kombinasyon niyan um, Uh, maraming magagaling yan. Alam nila kung anong tamang gawin. Pero uh, ano ba? Walang diwa. Ha? Walang diwa na, na lumaban. Alam nila kung anong mabuti. No? Uh, pero ano yun? Hindi nila ipaglalaban yung ano, mabuti na dapat gawin. Hindi na hindi gagawin. No? Dahil ano, walang, walang damdamin, walang diwa sila na, na isagawa. Ha? Yung ano yung nabut, mabuting naisipan. No? Maraming salamat. Uh, maraming salamat, uh, Professor Sisa. Uh, gusto lang natin ipaalala sa ating mga uh, kasama na kung pwede niyong i-share ang uh, mga cross-postings uh, cross ng ating um, uh, webinar. Uh, tayo ay mapapanood sa FB Live. Meron tayong uh, streaming sa pamamagitan ng uh, Facebook page ng CAP. Uh, ng para lang JMS uh, Cap ay Concerned Artist of the Philippines on Facebook uh, Usapang Peace Talks just type Usapang Peace Talks at gayon din ang ILPS Facebook pages eh, Tama yun Sarah at uh, mag- maraming salamat ulit kay Professor Season sa pagbanggit sa underappreciated na papel na ginagampanan ng sining sa ating political work at pupunta na tayo dun sa susunod na tanong uh, which is also connected with uh, the idea of culture. So, ito naman ay galing mula sa grupong Kadamay. Sa kasalukuyan, ano ang masasabi ninyong pinakamabisang sandata ng imperialismo sa larangan ng kultura at paano ito lalabanan? At meron tayong English translation dyan sa baba. And then the third question is similar to this second question. Ito naman ay mula sa uh, tambisan sa sining. Kung po pwede lang sana natin maipakita yung question number three. How would you confront a mass popular culture and popular culture materials that promote decadent or harmful culture among the masses? Professor Sisa? Ang ano, pinaka uh, mabisang ano, sandata ng imperialismo sa larangan ng kultura ay yung ano, tinawag na pop culture, no? Kahit ano ka, yung nakatanga ka lang sa bus, ano? Uh, ano yun, maririnig mo music ka ng ano, uh, ano yun, uh, disproportionate amount of saccharine love song uh, mula sa ano, US. Ano, by itself, love songs, eh, walang problema yan, pero in, in, uh, a, a, an overwhelming amount of it na, to block your mind from ano, serious issues, ano yun, ibang usapin na yan. Kaya subtle yan. Subtle conditioning of the mind. Eh? Take it easy, don't mind uh, the major issues. Pagkatapos, siyempre, uh, yung system of education, kay primary, kay preschool, primary, high school, o ano na, kolehyo na. Ano yun? Systematize yan, yung mga ideas. Ano na, maka-imperialista, antinasyonal, no? at antidemokratiko. Uh, laban sa Pilipino. Uh, yung... Um, Ganito, yung uh, example, ang highest point of knowledge sa mga pinakamatalino daw sa Pilipinas ay like, neoliberalism. No? Pero itong mga tangang ito, hindi na alam na no, yung sa so-called global chain, supply chain, o sa tinawag na comparative advantage, ang, ang, ano, ang comparative advantage daw ng mga Pilipinas ay o, ano, yung likas yaman ang ano, da, kahakutin ng mga dayuhan at uh, ang panibag ang ang bago lang na bagay uh, sa panahon ng neoliberalismo sa nakarang tatlong dekada ay pagpaluwas ng maraming Pilipino na w- walang trabaho sa Pilipinas kasi walang indust- walang sariling industrialisasyon at um, so yun lang naman na yun na lang bago eh. pero uh, sa panahon ng ano after the war Uh, linampasan tayo ng Hapon sa reconstruction eh, dahil ano ang ang uh, sinadyang Pilipinas na ano sinadyang Pilipinas na uh, panggagalingan ng uh, mga troso at iba pang natural resources para sa Japan pagkatapos nag newly industrialized ang countries yung ilang East Asian countries uh, ano na naman uh, ang Pilipinas hindi kasali diyan ang kanyang assignment ay ano, provision of uh, raw materials. 
pagdating na naman ng kwan, uh, uh, rapid capitalist industrial expansion ng China, ayan na naman, uh, hinahakok na naman yung ano, mineral resources ng Pilipinas. Kaya ganyan yung ano, ganyan ang... At uh, ano yun, dahil sa uh, edukasyon, uh, yung itinuturo ng pinakamataas, ano, yung... Uh, uh, yung ano pagsamba sa mga imperialista at pag pag ano pag uh, susuluhod sa kanila at ano naman ay hindi maiwasan na no sa halimbawa sa siyensya at teknolohiya marami tayong nasasanay pero nasasanay lamang sila para manilbihan sa mga ano mga uh, komprador ng empresa at mga subsidiaryo ng mga imperialistang korporasyon no um, ganun man kung ano yung tulad din ng English language, kung ano man yung uh, uh, karunungan na pwede nating i-transform uh, f- uh, for our national needs, uh, i-transform ang yung paggamit uh, para sa national needs, sa pagpapalawak ng demokrasya at paninilbihan sa masa. Ano yan? Um, yung alam ninyo, kahit na kung anong nangyari nakita ko kung ano yung peak ng ano um, after World War II yung peak ng uh, uh, pagsulpot ng sosyalismo at national liberation movement pagkatapos ito inukok ng anti-communism neocolonialism pagkatapos revisionismo mismo sa mga bansang sosyalista no? uh, tapos eh, um, yun nagtagumpay yung mga revisionista para sirain ang sosyalismo uh, sa dalawang malaking bansang sosyalista. Pagkatapos sa nakarang ano, apat na dekada eh, uh, neoliberalismo. Ha? Neoliberalismo ang ano, nangibabaw. Ngayon, pa- paano ko hindi mawawalan ng ano, ng ano, ng uh, uh, ng diwang lumaban? Aba, hindi maiwasan tulad din tulad ng sinabi ni Marx, ano? Hindi maiwasan na masusulpot at susulpot ang ang kontradiksyon sa loob ng sistema ng kapitalisma dahil sa kaniyang sariling matas ng pagkilos ha ah, yung uh, ang kapitalistang uri ay laging gagamit ng siyensya at teknolohiya kinokontrol niya pero ganun pa man sa kompetensya nila uh, nagagamit nila ng siyensya at teknolohiya ito ang nagpapataas ng ano social character na uh, at ito ang katuwang ng social character ng collective labor ha uh, so um, kung lundagin natin yung ano takbo ng panahon kung tatay kay Lenin hindi ba ang imperialismo ang nagbang at gera ng mga imperialista ang nagbunga uh, sa mga bansang sosyalista kaya ano to uh, malaking tiwala ko na ang sosyalismo Lilitaw at lilitaw. Ngayon na nagkakagulo na dahil sa neoliberalismo dahil ito ay sukdulan ng ano, uh, uh, sukdulan kasakiman ang kanyang prinsipyo, no? Ha? Hindi nangingilala, ha? Sa uh, labor power being uh, no, uh, source of new social wealth, no? New material values. Uh, dahil itong oppression at exploitation um, uh, labis na no na tumindi, ha? Uh, tiyak na, no? Uh, ngayon, nakikita natin yung malawak ha? na pag-alsa ng tao uh, sa linya ng anti-imperialist at demokratiko at ito ay eh, uh, tutuo sa uh, ilusang sosyalista. Uh, ito ay eh, mag, uh, magbubunga ng resurgence ng, ng world proletarian uh, revolution. Kaya yung ano, hindi nasasayang kung marunong tayong ano, Uh, kung may critical minds tayo, hindi nasasayang yung inaral natin kahit reaksyonaryo o mga imperialista. Eh? Basta, importante ngayon, ang kilos ng revolusyonaryo, uh, nagbibigay ng mga pananaw at pamamaraan. Paano mo punahin na? ang linalaman ng kultura at edukasyon na binibigay sa atin ng mga reaksyonaryo. Pagkatapos, ayan, pipihitin mo, babaguhin mo para magabit ng... Ano, ng uh, ng kilusang revolusyonaryo. Alam niyo uh, sa desperasyon sa kompetisyon ng mga imperialista, 
um, hindi nila maiwasan ang paggamit ng siyensya at uh, teknolohiya. Alam niyo yung paggamit ng quantum ano, uh, quantum uh, physics uh, sa application niyan, pinabilis niyang produksyon, pinabilis niyang komunikasyon at ano, distribusyon ng mga kalakal. Ito ay magbubunga ng mas malalaking kontradiksyon uh, mismo sa hanay ng mga imperialista sa pagitan ng uh, uh, kapital at uh, labor. Puputok ito uh, sa palagay ko hindi ko baka hindi ko abutin yung ano yung pag ano yung malaki ang resurgence pero may tantya ko in the 10 in 10 to 30 years sa niyan uh, yung kahari-hari ng neoliberalismo ano yan uh, mayroong ano yan may ang pushback ng yung nangyayari na yung malaki ang pagbago ng agos ng uh, takbo ng pangyayari mangyayari yan Uh, lalo na sa inyo ng ano uh, sa abot ninyo ng ano na kun uh, balat ng loob na ito <laughs> uh, so yun um ganito yung uh, uh, ganito ang aking kana optimismo eh ala halimbawa sa ano komunikasyon ha uh, hindi ba sa panahon ni Rizal kailangan maghintay ka na isang buwan Uh, bago yung mga revolusyonaryo sa Pilipinas makatanggap ng ano, propaganda mula sa Tina Rizal, Praridel at iba pa. Alam mo, sa labas pa sa, uh, ng bansa sila nagpropaganda movement eh, noong, 98, noong 1880s. Isang buwan. Eh? Oh. Pagdating sa panahon ni Lenin, no? uh, ano na, uh, 20th century trend, yung prabda ni Lenin, eh, kuha, eh, nagbibiyahe ng ano, ng four days bago makarating sa iba't ibang bahagi ng ano days or even weeks sa uh, ano sa loob ng Russia uh, o pagdating ngayon panahon ng jet no ngayon lalo na panahon na ng itong ganito online kaya itong mga bagong ano technique o teknolohiya at first gamit yan ng ano ng kaharing uri pero hindi maiwasan na lumaganap yan sa hanay ng mga inaape. Ha? Dahil ginagawa rin customer eh, ang mga inaape. At yung ano, the crisis of overproduction arises precisely because when, ano, when the ruling class uh, um, takes too much and lessens the income of people, hindi mabili yung produkto. Kaya ano, itong paggamit ng... Uh, online eh, kwan, eh. Uh, eh linalaylayan nila marami kang makukuha libre uh, para dahan-dahan ano naniniil na ano yung ilang components no uh, pero ano to uh, noong araw eh alam yung period ng cold war ang hirap mag uh, ang hirap makakuha ng ano uh, librong marxista ha huh? ngayon na, ang marxist archives nandiyan na sa online no ngayon hindi ko alam kung ano kailan nila hihigpitan yan. And dahil ano eh, dahil ano, nagtagumpa yung mga, uh, tulad ng sinabi nga ni Juan Buffett, na nanalo ang kapitalista sa class struggle. No? Dahil panalo sila sa class, ano, sa class struggle in the last, ano, from 1991, parang ano eh, panalong-panalo sila. Yung, ano, yung uh, malaking burgesia. Um, eh, pero, Mamaya malal- mahalata nila na no palakas uli yung kilos ng uh, revolusyonaryo ng proletariado kaya maghihigpit sila. Pero ano para rin, uh, nasa interest nila na hindi nasirain nila itong ano sa kalakhan, hindi nila sisirain itong mga pag-expand at pag-speed up ng communication. Yung ano eh, yung pag-speed up ng communication, yan ang uh, magpapabilis uh, ng ano kapag yung uh, hinaing ng tao Uh, tumatakbo na ng mas mabilis kaysa mga pagpukunwari ha? at pamimigil ng nagaharing uri, ano na yan? Um, uh, sabayan mo pa yung, ano, yung high-speed communication, ang revolusyon, maaaring mas mabilis pa kaysa nakaraan. Cumulative ang effect ng uh, kombinasyon ng science and technology and the collective labor uh, of, uh, uh, of the proletariat. So, yun ang masasabi ko tungkol sa mga uh, 
at sa lingwahe, kultura bilang ano, um, bilang larangan ng pagkilos at kasangkapan o sandata sa uh, labanan ng mga uri. Okay, salamat uh, ka Joma. Um, meron pa ang ano, uh, meron pa ba tanong from our panelists uh, para kay Kajoma or comments? Okay, meron ba? Uh, Kajo, curious kami ni Kiri dun sa um, nabanggit niyo kanina yung tungkol sa digital platforms at social media. Um, tapos alam namin gumamit kayo na gumagamit na sa Facebook kayo ngayon at gumagamit ng friends sa social media para um, uh, mag-express ng mga ano ng mahalagang mga messages at ano uh, at mak, uh, at makipag-socialize um, alam rin namin What? na mahilig kayo sa video okay <laughs> may essay ba kayo na bago o dati tungkol sa video okay <laughs> wala pa ko masyadong sinulat yung mga sinasabi ko kanina, yung pan, kailangan ng one elaborations pa. Um, parang nag-uumpisa pa lang ako, ako sa pag-uapuha, pero may mga ano, in-advance na ako ng ano, uh, propositions tungkol sa sinabi ko, sinusulat ko na um, yung ano eh, yung um, maraming nagugulat eh, yung kwan, uh, ang mga tinatawag na ni, ni kwan, ni Marx, ang gagalin eh, na Pilistins nagugulat sa malaki. Kasi overwhelming eh. Yung kaliba, yung utak ng ni Parlade, that's the a good, ano, yung utak ni Lorenzana, ano, at dito terte, gulat, no, sa mga bago, bagong gawa, bagong malakihang bagay na, ano, uh, nangyayari sa daigdig ng mga interiorista. Yung, pero, uh, ang isang Marxista, inaalam niya, uh, paano yung tatakbo yung contradiction loob, ng loob ng isang bagay ina-analyze ha yung yan naman ang ano eh uh, kung anong ginagawa ng kwan mga uh, revolusyonaryo sa Pilipinas yung ina-analyze nila ang nagaring sistema pagkatapos uh, uh, akala mo ang madam buhala yang malintek na mga halimaw na opisyal at saka yung hukbong halimaw akala mo eh Uh, isang buo na hindi naghahate, no? walang mga bahabahagi. Ngayon, pag in-apply mo ang dialectical materialism, alam mo ka, pwedeng tainin ng People's Army, ha? ng pautay-utay yung bahabahagi ng isang malaking hukbo. No? E, yun ang ibig ko sabihin. Kaya, kailangan ko pang magsulat para ilagtad lahat no? yung bahabahagi ng bagong kalagayan, lalo na kaugnay ng ano, um, Uh, paggamit sa pinakamatas ng tas, ang quantum uh, um, uh, mechanics, uh, aplikasyon nito hanggang sa paggamit ng mga uh, monopolyo kapitalista. Uh, pagkatapos, eh, itong digital platform, uh, yung, alam niyo ninyo, uh, bukod sa pag-intindi, paano natin gamitin yan, alam niyo, mabuti nga na, ito, ito ay magandang bunga ng COVID, no? Uh, nainganyo tayo na gumamit ng online. Pero ano, ano karamihan ay overwhelmingly webinar ang ginagawa natin. Uh, pwede na bang ano eh, mag-cultural performances, gumawa ng mga kurso. Pagkatapos, ito yung matagal ko nga ng ano, matagal ko ng inaambisyon magkayo ng ano sarili nating um, uh, TV radio station na ano based sa ano sa online murang mura uh, at yung um, yung uh, content madali nating ano yun madali mata, madali nating matipon mula sa mga MO uh, sa mga uh, iba't ibang tipo ng organisasyon at uh, sa loob ng Pilipinas sa iba't ibang bahagi ng ng daigdig we can have an interesting ano um uh, ano to uh, kung ano masyadong uh, masyadong uh, ano to itong uh, uh, terorismo ng estado sa uh, sa Pilipinas uh, uh, mindful of that pwedeng ano eh pwedeng ilagay sa ibang bansa yung ano base kasi ano naman yan eh Uh, ang gagamitin mo naman cyberspace eh, importante lang na, naka-address sa bayang sambayan ng Pilipino yung ano 
yung mga programa. Madali ano. Uh, pero habang ano pa, mayroon pang espasyo sa Pilipinas, maganda yung kuna, defiant pa rin ang uh, pambansang demokratikong kilusan hanggat maaari. Uh, tingnan nyo, para bang ano, uh, ABS-CBN, uh, inalis yung franchise. Ngayon, ano, nag-online base sila. Uh, ganon. Yung ano eh, aking example ng ano, ng paggamit ng ano, online base sa sariling istasyon natin. Sa, yung ano, yung Christian Broadcasting. Kasi na, marami na akong pinagsabihan eh. Uh, konsultahin ninyo mga kaibigan natin na nagpapatakbo ng Christian Broadcasting o paano ano, nila, ano, uh, paano nila pinapatakbo. Yan you know? So, uh, kailangan may pag-intindi uh, sa uh, kalagayan at anong mga komponente niya na pwede natin gamitin at uh, lubusin ang paggamit para sa uh, kilusang makabayan at progresibo at uh, yo yo ganun siyempre hindi ka mag-aaral kundi ano wala kang layunin gumamit ng inaral mo no so ganun ngayon um, mabuti rin na ako ay magpapalawig nga sa kung paano tayo ng gumamit ng online kung ano na yung cultural situation at anong mga material components dito at paano gamitin para sa pagsulong ng revolusyon sa Pilipinas Yes, at si Kiri... Uh, uh, isa uh, nga pala. Uh, ako ay, kuha niya eh. Yung uh, maraming, maraming uh, nagbibiro sa akin. Oh, ba't gamitin mo yung Friendster? Eh, gamit ng mga imperialista yan. Ba't nakikiusok ka? Hindi, mahalagang Friendster. Uh, ako eh, kuha, yung uh, sa akin, hindi ako gano'ng kuha eh, technically competent parang uh, yung... At saka isa pa, yung Twitter eh, akala ko, Uh, masyadong may give and take yung bang marami yung dumadag sa yung kwan dumadag sa yung banat eh wala akong panahon sumagot sa lahat may nagtayo na sa akin eh basta yung keep up your offensive ignore yung attacks na no? ganyan din siya no? sa Friendster ginagawa ko uh, basta si, uh, si, may nagsabi sa akin no? kapag may mga DDS ha? pinakamabuting kaubo mo i-block mo lang Ah, uh, uh, i-block mo. Kasi kumikita pa lang ang malintek na trolls na yan kapag nag, uh, nag-react yung, ano, yung tinitira. Uh, wala silang bayad. Pag, ano, liban na lang kung trolls ng militar. Yung pinaka-violent ang language, ang uh, militar yun. Inumpisan niya, kino yan. At, uh, yung medyo magamit ng rason, inumpisan din yan. Sa panahon ni... Ni, ni 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 Noy Noy no? yung anti poverty commission ginam base yan ng ano ng uh, ng uh, pro pro keno trolls ano ganyan yung malaking pagkakataon yung ano eh yung ano yung uh, Facebook kasi ang laki ng bilang ng Pilipino na gumagamit dahil is murang ano yan murang medium of communication ng mga overseas Filipinos at yung mga pamilya nila na isang factor at saka siyempre uh, marami kang makukuha ang interesting sa ano eh, sa sa Facebook of from um, uh, learned use of the Facebook you can have a learned use hindi lang papyan uh, yung uh, ang uh, usually kwan eh joking ni sasabihin ko ah pag ano mayroon akong hindi alam ah konsultahin ko yung intelligence agency natin ang ibig ko lang sabihin, Google search eh? o Wikipedia. Diba? Eh, shortcut eh. Siyempre, nasa iyo na magpalalim no? ng, ano, ng kalaman. Pero uh, at the tip of your finger, you don't have to ano ba, take a trip to the library. Eh? Yun ang advantage ng Facebook. Kaya ano, mga bagay katulad ng Facebook makakapagpabilis ng um, ng edukasyon ng uring manggagawa. Ganito eh. Ganito ang pagtingin ko sa sa uh, ano, paggawa, no? Yung lakas paggawa. Ang lakas paggawa ay hindi lang muscle power. Ha? Hindi man fingertip power lang ng mga uh, ano, mga white collar, mga ano, gumagamit ng computer. Brain, ano yan? Mental and uh, physical and mental exertion 
ha? parehas. Pagkatapos, dahil sa mga bagong kagamitan sa impormasyon at pag-aalam sa mga bagay-bagay, yung mga uri, nasa uring manggagawa na dinidismiss na sweat, ano, uh, ano to, yung uh, muscular and sweaty labor lang yan, no? ano yan, na uh, tataas yung kanilang ano, kamalayan. At lalo na kung gawin mo lang six hours ng trabaho ng mga manggagawa, lalong maging edukado yan. Ikaya yung petty at uh, yung mga gagawa, lalong ano, sa pag, uh, pag, ano ba, pag-increase ng kalaman, ano yan, maglalapitan. Uh, ayun lang, peligro na lang na dapat bakahin yung ano, yung yung manggagawa may influensya ng Pitiburgis na ideya dapat <laughs> tinitingnan ng mga proletarong revolusyonaryo na yung Pitiburgis ang dapat ano ah, ma-inspire na uh, pumanig man lang no? uh, kundi ang kinin ang punto de vista eh, ng uring manggagawa ah, pero yung magagamit natin itong mga bagong kasangkapan Uh, sa komunikasyon, impormasyon at edukasyon para ano yon uh, palawakin ang revolusyonaryong kalaman, uh, siyentipiko at revolusyonaryong kalaman sa hanay ng um, uh, uring anak pawis, lalo ng uh, proletariado at uh, y- uh, uh, pati na yung uh, uh, pag-ugnay, pakipag-alyansa sa mga nasa gitnang saray ng lipunan. Maraming salamat ka, Joman. Very comprehensive yung uh, sagot doon sa nabanggit pati yung Friendster at mga uh, ka, kahaling tulad na bagay pagdating sa social media. At may mga tanong pa rin yata tayo uh, from our uh, friends organizations. Question uh, four ay uh, mula sa Surian, sa Sini. Tama ba? Maari yata nating i-flash uh, yung uh, teksto. Oh, malaking papel, malaking halaga at papel ng ano. Hindi pa ko siya. Ayan, I'm sorry. Sige, pakituloy yung tanong. Ayan po. Uh, question number five. Sa panahon ng pandemya, kung Uh, saan nag- nadadagdagan ang manggagawang walang trabaho at mga magsasakang walang kita sa sakahan, ano ang pangunahing tungkulin ng mga cultural workers sa pagmumulat sa kanila? Mula sa sinagbayan ng tanong na ito. Kajomat? Nakuha po ba yung tanong? Ang ano, uh, pinaka-importante, ano, uh, palamdan yung pag-iisip ng mga Uh, manggagawa at mga uh, magsasaka lalo na sa panahon na sila ay nawawala ng trabaho at uh, uh, at hindi lang yung mga pag ano uh, palalamnan ng um, uh, kanilang isip na mga mapanlabang ideya ano rin pa uh, palagablabin din ang diwa nilang lumaban kaya iyan ang sining ano ang kwane eh yung panagbibigay ka ng idea Uh, to distinguish it from ano, yung excite ano ba yung uh, working on the emotions um, in combination with ano uh, the good ideas ano yan yung may formalidad no ha pero sa kultura sa sining ano yon yung buhay, yung buhay ha na, na ano mo na synthesize mo at yung organic unity Well, you cannot have an organic unity in a work of ano, literature uh, without the no. Yung taking into account mga ano ba, partic- kung, uh, particularities, sensitivities, emotions sa mga tao. Yan ang tagandaan na ano, sining. Ha? Hindi mo may express yan sa, ano, sa pros essay on whatever philosophy or whatever. No? So, um, yun, mabuti na habang ano, may epidemic, Uh, may um, COVID uh, pandemic at uh, mga tao ay kwan, nawawalan ng trabaho, uh, mabuti kung palamnan yung kanilang isip at uh, pala, uh, pala, pagalab, uh, pa, at ano yon yung 
Patingin ka rin yung kanilang ano, damdamin uh, at diwang lumaban. Uh, kasi ganito eh. Uh, ang Pilipinas puputok at puputok eh. Dahil sa ano eh, sabay-sabay eh. Yung ano, yung... Um, Uh, yung salot na gawa ng tao lalo na yung katulad ni Duterte at kanyang mga militar at yung mga nag, uh, nagkaharing uri na pinagsisilbihan at yung dalawang imperialista ha? na sinisikap pa ni Duterte gunggung talaga ito uh, yung ano kung anong talagang nasa bayensel ito ng uh, national sovereignty no? kung sa kano at iba pang kapitalistan na hindi Chino, ano, pinap- oh, sa lahat ng kapitalistang uh, dayuhan, ipinapangako yung ano, sell out of the national patrimony sa isang tiyanyo ng konstitusyon. Ngayon pa man, ang mga batas ng Pilipinas ay masama na. No? Yung tiwangwang ang Pilipinas, mga mining law, etc. Yan, ay kwan, uh, pag, ano ba? pag sell out ng natural resources. Pagkatapos yung ginawa sa China, buong West Philippine Sea, pati na yung... Um, pagkalaking-laking halaga ng ano mineral and marine resources eh ipinamigay no oh so nagkaroon ng covid 19 pandemic problema na yan salot na yan pero itong mga salot ng bayan na halimaw lalo ano nagtake advantage sila ha huh? una sa lahat eh, itinulak yung Renal Road yung Anti-Terrorism Act no at uh, yung uh, yung kampanya ng state terrorism ang ano pinalarga yung itong uh, health problem na covid kinawa ang pagkakataon para ano yon yung magdeploy ng mga militar at uh, gumawa lang ng mga ma, 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 ano ba ma, magaling sa paggawa ng restriction pero yung pagbigay ng ayuda uh, yung uh, pagbibigay ng mass testing contact tracing at uh, healthcare wala ninakaw ninanakaw ni Duterte yung mga general ay ah, yung bilyon-bilyonan limpak-limpak na pera ninakaw nila pagkakataon kaya ang ekonomiya at gobyerno ni Duterte uh, ano to <laughs> bangkarote bankrap lubog kaya uh, kawawa <laughs> kawawa si Duterte mismo kung siya pa rin ang, o kaya si Sarah, ha? kung sino man sa dinastiya niya, ang magpresidente, ha? beyond ano, 2021, ha? kawawa rin yung ano, uh, kung sakali opposition manalo, kawawa rin. Ang laking problema na ginawa ni Duterte. Ha? At uh, mabuti naman, puputok yung nagkaring sistema. Uh, sabi nga ni Duterte, nagbi, kung nagbibiro sa mga ilang kamag-anakan at kaibigan, Mabuti dapat magpagsalamat mga komunista sa akin kasi talagang binulok ko na. Ha? Ninakaw, mandami ko nang ninakaw. Ha? At uh, uh, naipakita ko napakasama ang sistema. Ha? Yung pamamaslang ay nasasagawa na madali. Kaya sabi niya, dapat patawarin daw ng mga komunista si Duterte dahil ano, uh, eh, ang komentaryo ko naman gago siya. Eh, sinasadya niyang makinabang. Ay sinasabi nga lang yan na ano um, unwittingly eh siyang best recruiter pero sa kasamaan niya sa katangian niya masama hindi sadyang ano tumutulong sa sa ano sa NPA kundi sa kalabis-labisan niya ng pagsugpo sa kilos ng rebolusyonaryo doon siya nakakagawa ng napakaraming bagay na masama para sa bayan Okay, maraming salamat, uh, salamat. Kajoma. Um, meron naman tayong um, isa pang tanong mula ulit sa ARPAC o Artista ng Revolusyong Pangkultura. Um, so, i-flash po natin sa ating screen. Uh, pero pangungunahan na natin. Uh, Kajoma, ang tanong po mula sa ARPAC ay... Uh, kailangan ba na magkaroon muli ng isang workbook katulad nung ginawa ng paksa? No? Uh, isang komperensya uh, na kahalintulad nung sa paksa na uh, maisagawa din sa panahon natin. At ano, 
ano raw po ba yung mga kondisyon noong 1971 na nagbunsod sa paggawa ng nasabing workbook ng paksa? Ah, magaling na magkaroon ng paksa workbook. Um, at uh, nasa kalagayan tayo na tulad ng 1971, no? Uh, ang masang Pilipino at mga organisadong uh, mga organisasyon na progresibo na kahalata na kay Marcos kanong pa kay niya. Uh, yung intensyon ni Marcos na no, magpataw ng uh, pas- pasistang diktadura. Eh, kaya gan- ganyan din ang kalagayan ngayon. Itong mga buwan ng ano, um, uh, Mayo hu- o oh, Hunyo hanggang ano, Oktubre, ano yan? Uh, kailangan na uh, pan, ano pansinin mabuti ko anong, anong sinasabi at galaw ni Duterte. Bakit itong hayop na ito baka gagawa ng mga false flag operations para no no yung uh, magkaroon siya ng dahilan na no na gamitin immediately yung uh, anti-terrorism act, mang arrest, mag mass arrest at pumatay na marami pagkatapos uh, yung uh, Madali na yon yung nationwide uh, martial law uh, proclamation at tatapos lalagyan pa niya ng dibuho ang konting ano, palabok yung charter change. Um, so kung anong ginawa ni Marcos, baka gagawin pa ni Duterte. Kasi ganito eh, para bang ano, kung basahin mo sa periodiko ngayon, parang surefire na may election na. Ha? May surefire election sa 2022. Ano naman, mabuti naman na mayroong uh, isasambayan laban sa sa ano sa uh, rehimeng Duterte dahil na mayatot ang ano konserbatibo oposisyon yung ano uh, dahil trapo ang mga nasa liberal party naglipatan sila kagad no? so eh, yung mabuti uh, meron naman ganyan no dahil ano uh, mayroong umaasa sa eleksyon so let it be uh, kasi maraming Pilipino ano diyan eh uh, na nag-iisip na lahat ng paraan dapat gamitin pero yung mga revolusyonaryo nakatuon sila sa ano sa uh, paghanda at pagkilos laban sa pinakamasamang posibleng gawin ng uh, taong katulad ni Marcos o ni Duterte. Ngayon, yung si Duterte si ako pwedeng ano may batayan na posibleng magka-eleksyon talaga. Kasi kontrolado ni Mar- ni Duterte yung ano eh, electoral process. Kanya yung TIM Corporation na partner firm ng ano ng uh, ng Smartmatic through Dennis Oy. At pagkatapos, nandiyan yung kanya ano, mas makinarya ng gobyerno, yung sistema ng propaganda, yung mga poll surveys at saka polls eh uh, uh, ano mang pe- pinepeke nila. So, um eh o minsan nagtataka kung bakit ano marami yung naniniwala na ano tiyak na magkakaroon ng eleksyon. Ano naman uh, ako ay uh, uh, sinasabi ko may posibilidad mag-eleksyon mag, mag dahil kontrolado naman ni Duterte yung eleksyon. Mabuti na may grupo na naniniwala sa eleksyon yung oposisyon na oposisyon para kapag andayan na si Duterte sa eleksyon, may tutumba siya tulad ng pagtumba kay ano, kay kay Marcos, ano? Kaya ano, sa larangan ng mga legal na uh, demokratikong puwersa, okay lang na ano, na mag-assume sila na dapat maghanda sila ng eleksyon kasi ano para, hindi pa tayo 100% sure. Eh. Ngayon, um tunang ko yung ano Tunang ko yung kwan, overall possibility, mag-election man o hindi, eh? um, tiyak na si Duterte ang mangingibabaw eh? at uh, gagamit ng puwersa. Kaya mabuti may paghahanda ang mga taong nasa larangan ng kultura na uh, gumawa ng uh, uh, mga bagay na dapat gawin tulad ng paksa workshop. No? bilang paghahanda sa patuloy na paglubha ng kalagayan sa Pilipinas. Ayun ano, yung kanito yan eh, um, dapat intindihin natin si Duterte, ano eh, pumupusta sa dalawang imperialista eh. Ang, ang malaking utang na loob ni Duterte sa mga imperialista, yung mga kagamitan, sandata. 
uh, at ang kanyang main main support diyan sa anti sa kampanya ng terorismo ng Estado US US kasi ang US gusto niya lubusin yung ano tinatawag niya ang ideological victory gusto niya lubusin ang alam niyo yung Pilipinas nasa uh, ano ito nasa prominenteng katayuan ang Pilipinas isa sa mga tampok na, ano na anti-imperialist forces Uh, siyang ano tampok na nagdadala ng pulang bandila together with the Maoista of the you know, of India and uh, a few other countries um, pero ang Pilipinas ang pinaka subok pinaka anito pinaka bibong ano uh, puwersa ngayon sa daigdig um, at uh, ngayon gusto ng mga imperialista na ano patayin yan para malubos nila pero bago nila malubos ang pag uh, wipe out ng ano ng um, uh, uh, mga progresibong puwersa sa daigdig ano ano yung palubhan ng palubha yung ano crisis ng world capitalist system kasi natukoy ko na yung malaki sa malaki hang terms natukoy ko na kung bakit ano um, yung uh, crisis tumulubha hanggang sa ano magkalaban na yung dating magkaibigan di ba eh, yung China at US, eh, magkaibigan sila, main partner sa neoliberalist, uh, neoliberal globalization, eh, magkaaway na. So, yan. Ang China naman, uh, malaking silbi, ang malaking silbi ng China, kay uh, Duterte, dyan siya nakakapangurakot na malaki. Hindi lamang doon sa ano, mal- <laughs> yung, dahil ano, eh, hindi naman natupad yung 24 billion na loans. Um, may nakaw si Duterte dyan, pero pinakamalaking nakaw ni Duterte, yung illegal, yung sa kanyang relasyon sa mga Chinese criminal triads, yung pag uh, pag-smuggle, yung smuggle ng pag-smuggling in of illegal drugs at yung smuggling out, smuggling out ito may may kombinasyon ng legal at illegal, smuggling out of mineral resources, hakot ng hakot ng China. Um, dapat ito eh tuunan ng pansin eh kasi ang kasabwat ng ano China dito hindi lang si Duterte kundi mga local officials walang recording yung mineral ores ano na uh, hinahakot uh, wala mang ano hindi man um, yun ang ginagawa uh, itong ano ang China mas ma- ma- mas mas mabagsik pa kaysa Japan eh sa paghahakot ng mineral resources uh, at uh, siyempre most dramatically Buong West Philippines eh, kinanya na. So, ganyan. Uh, naka, uh, humaharap tayo ngayon sa mga malalaking peligro at pinsala, uh, mga malalaking pinsala at peligro na kagagawan ni Duterte. Yes, maraming salamat, Professor Joma. And uh, I think Kiri will... Uh... Ah, sige, uh, Professor Joma, uh, kung na, dumako naman tayo sa pelikula, <laughs> sige, naalala ko lang noon nung nakatrabaho ka namin sa The Guerrilla is a Poet, uh, hindi nyo pakilala nun sila Carl Medina at si Anjali Abayan, uh, si Anjali, tapos ang sinadjust nyo ay uh, para sa Batang Joma ay si Dennis Trillo, tapos kay Julieta de Lima ay si Kim Chu. So I guess this means na Uh, abreast kayo sa uh, pelikulang Pilipino at in fact uh, in the last uh, 10 years you have supported the production of films about the National Democratic Revolution in fact a film films about your own life and the founding of the Communist Party of the Philippines yung tanong ko ay uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, sa ngayon <laughs> ang proyekto pa, namin ni- uh, hindi pa pa ako tapos. Hindi pa ako tapos. <laughs> Alam ko, excited kayo sumagot. Pero ito, um, kung may pagkakataon muli na mag-produce tayo ng pelikula, alam ko na alam nyo rin na hindi madali ito, magastos. Pero kung merong pagkakataon, at saka kalimutan muna natin na ang hirap sa panahon ngayon dahil sa attacks ng Duterte government. Pero ano yung gusto nyo o ano yung pangarap nyo na maggawa na pelikula tungkol sa National Democratic Revolution. It could be a, a historical time or or moment or kahit isang personalidad na 
na nais niya na maisip pelikula rin yung buhay. Yan po. Sa ngayon, ang preoccupation namin ni Julie may pagkahamdram. Itinitipon namin para mga ano ba, making sure that the legacy is ano ba, is put into shape, no? But before we leave the face of the earth, kaya um, ayong tema, ayong mga libro combining uh, yung mga separate writings ko matipon under several thematic headings. Mga train pa yan. Uh, so, uh, pan yun, di ba? Kung tingnan mo lang, how can you dramatize that? Pero ganyan, I'll give you an idea how, ano, how to make my, me uh, more interesting enough But for a film. Babayang na ba tayo ngayon? <laughs> Ganito, may mga sinasabi ako na hindi sinasabi ng iba. Uh, kung baga sa isang, ano, isang libro ni Maxwell, itinuturo niya ako na one of the 200 no marxist after marx no huh? uh, one of the ano ba 200 experts in marxism after marx no iyon eh uh, palagi ko ano ito pa, may pagyayabang ano <laughs> so take it with a grain of salt ako sana mga ako yung lang nagsasabi na ano napakagandang ang prospects di pa ngayon napakadismal may may strategic setbacks ha Uh, pagpatak ng 1991 ano uh, dalawang pinakamalaking sosyalistang bansa eh, ano na naging kapitalista na without any doubt no yan China no yung, na, nabigo ang cultural revolution 78 klarong klaro si Deng Xiaoping nagagawa na niya kanyang gawin pagkatapos America sole superpower until 2008 ah, ngayon mabuti pa nasasabayan ko yung mga ekonomista pati burgista ekonomista nagsasabi, magmula 2008, may problema ng US. So, isa ako sa mga nagsasabi, magmula 2008, yung neoliberalism proven bankrupt at ang US, nawala na yung pagiging sole superpower. Hindi na, yung, hindi na niya masosolo. Sa hanay ng mga imperialista, hindi niya na masosolo. Ang ano. Sa madaling salita, um, yung bago ako pumanaw, ang mahalaga yung ano yon um, yung yung ano I would be sort of the John the Baptist I would herald no I would herald the resurgence of the world proletarian revolution ngayon uh, ang ginagawa ginagawa ko inoobserba ko yung paglaganap at pagintensify ng anti-imperialist and democratic struggles all over the world no um, pagkatapos uh, Uh, siyempre kasama na dyan yung banga yan ng imperialista at um, uh, pagkatapos paano tutuko to sa uh, world proletarian revolution socialismo pa rin eh uh, susulo Ngayon, that's the largest picture no? now um, you can relate me to that a large picture uh, and concretize it somehow no? uh, madaling i-concretize yan eh uh, dahil nasa abroad naman ako talaga, may mga pick, may mga larawan yan ng mga umaalsang tao, di ba? Eh kung sa Pransya na lang, di ba? May ayo, may ano eh, pati sa Europe eh, na, pati sa Amerika, di ba? Uh, umaalsa ang mga tao, lalo na sa third world countries. Pagkatapos, siyempre, the best concretization should be um, uh, should be how to relate what I say about the world and about the Philippines to the Philippines, di ba? So, uh, binibigyan lang kita ng large frame. Uh, kailangan may pakita may bagong ano, may bagong halaga, uh, o kahalagahan ng ginagawa ko at sinasabi ko. Yan, that's a new that's a new thing that can be taken into account in a new film. So, I don't know how ano, how you can further concretize that, no? Um, ko pa lang yung budget eh sa si international report. <laughs> uh, siguro pala, sinabi ko naman na malaya basta managinip pero siguro sa sunod mag-isip tayo na given our limitations then our you know, alam mo yon sa finance at saka sa paggalaw ano yung possible pa rin na gawin uh, yon or kahit kahit per halimbawa Gregorio Rosal o kaya kahit recently alam ko yung yung isang peasant leader who was there sa founding ng um, 
ng NPA also died uh, very recently and I think napaka colorful ng buhay buhay niya si Kawaning. So parang mas ganun pa yung iniisip ko yung may may kakayanan tayo. Pero maraming salamat po sa pag pag-share nung pangarap nyo na uh, mailahad yung nangyari since the 1990s at kung paano na sa forefront uh, ang po kayo ngayon. Ayun. Okay, um, Professor Mike and everyone, uh, that is all the time we have for now for our open discussion. Uh, we still have, I think, two more questions from Tambisan and Yari Kagami, but we will send them over to Kajoma, and Kajoma will respond to your questions and post them on Friendster. <laughs> okay, abangan po natin ang um, doon, doon sa magagandang tanong ng Tambisan at ni Yari. Um, and kung meron pa kayo mga ibang tanong, just send them over uh, to CAP or to uh, directly to Kajoma. Uh, we would like to thank uh -oh. everyone who um, asked questions, gave comments. In fact, we have uh, uh, one more comment from the chairperson of uh, the New Patriotic Alliance, Bayan, um, Carol Araulio. Um, salute to Professor Season on this new compilation of writings on culture, literature, and art. The Q&A provides further enlightenment and food for thought. Hindi ko nababasahin yung isa pa niyang comment because we're running out of time. Uh, maraming pong salamat sa lahat ng uh, dumalo, uh, nagkomentaryo sa inyong solidarity, sa mga uh, reviewers natin at mga mensahe nyo para kay Kajoma at sa ating aklat, sa mga ating mga interpreters, uh, maraming maraming salamat din. Um, at maraming salamat sa lahat ng uh, bahagi ng ating uh, panel at ng ating tech. Um, gayun din, uh, gusto nating um, uh, pasalamatan yung mga nagbabalak na bumili ng aklat uh, at yung distributor nito. Uh, gayon din, of course, si Kajoma at saka si Kajuli. Uh, napakahalagang um, panahon ang buwan ng Mayo uh, para sa uh, kasaysayan ng sosyalismo sa buong mundo. Um, um, over 70 years ago, um, uh, kung iniisip natin bakit isang sosyalista o founding, uh, uh, founding chairperson ng Communist Party of the Philippines ang kailangan mag magsalita tungkol sa art and culture, um, isa pong napakahalagang uh, bahagi ng kasaysayan ng sangkatauhan ay ang pagkakatalo ng mga pasismo, uh, ng mga pasista at tinalo sila ng uh, Unyong Soviet, ng mga Bolshevik sa uh, uh, pamumuno ni Stalin. Uh, walang pinaka-epektibong puwersa uh, sa kasaysayan ng ating mundo at kultura ang uh, gumapi sa pasismo kundi ang um, ang kultura, ang politika at ang vision ng uh, sosyalismo. Kaya napakahalagang aklat ito at uh, sana ay uh, mabasa ng uh, marami pa sa atin. Professor Mike. Marami salamat sa lahat uh, sa inyo. Sige, go ahead, Kajoma. Yes, please, go ahead po. Sige, tuloy na. Oh. Maraming salamat sa inyong lahat na aking katalakayan at sa mga organisasyon na inyong uh, uh, kinakatawan at sa lahat, lahat ng ating tagapakinig. Yung mga pahabol na ito, ano, sisikapit kong sagutin, no? uh, ipahabol lang at uh, ating ugnayan ay ano, patuloy. Uh? At uh, umaasa akong lalong yayabong ang ating mga ugnayan. Maraming salamat, Kajoma. At uh, of course, hindi mangyayari itong uh, programang ito kung wala ang inyong presensya, ang inyong partisipasyon. Maraming salamat sa pagbibigay muli ng isang uh, pangkasaysayong perspektiba sa lahat ng ito. Hindi natin maaari talakayin ang kultura, sining nang wala yung uh, lente ng kasaysayan na ipinakita ninyo sa amin. At maraming salamat sa aking mga nakasama sa programa, Sara, sa lahat ng ating mga panelists, sa lahat ng mga nagbigay ng kanilang pananalita, solidarity messages. At syempre, yung libro, ito yung bida ng ating programa. And so we would like to remind everyone uh, that copies of On Culture, Art, and Literature is available at the popular bookstore in Quezon City and Solidaridad Bookshop in Manila. 
you can also purchase the ebook online through Amazon, Kobo, Barnes and Noble, uh, Apple Books, and the second book of the series on the philosophy of Marxism, Leninism, Maoism is also now available at these bookstores and online outlets. It will be launched on June 20 in Utrecht, Netherlands. So to close our program, we would like to invite lovely Joy Carrion of Paaralang Jose Maria Season para sa kanyang pananalita. Okay, thank you po. For the closing remarks, let quote uh, Mao Zedong. He said, Our purpose is to ensure that literature and art fit well into the whole revolutionary machine as a component part, part of that they operate as powerful weapons for uniting and educating the people and for attacking and destroying that enemy and that they help the people fight the enemy with one heart and one mind. The global and ongoing effects of pandemic and unjust neoliberal policies had worsened the inequity, the economic crisis, and grave living conditions experienced by the general public. With these premises, the toiling masses, mainly the marginalized and oppressed, must recognize the worthiness and urgency of collective action and solidarity. We have to educate and propagate amongst the people and amongst our ranks on the important cultural, political, and economic work. In doing so, we also raise our determination and commitment. In this book launch on culture, art, and literature, we recognize Professor Jose Maria Season's clear and concise analysis of the definition, concurrent conditions, and relevance of culture in our society. He also emphasizes to the readers the undeniable significance of arts and literature. Artists and cultural workers must serve the people. Art and literature should be used as weapons to be utilized for the people's struggle. Revolutionary education and propaganda as an integral part of societal transformation is a crucial and vital tool of the mass movement. Political consciousness from critical and effective engagement with the masses assure us in consolidating their communal response to wage class struggle against the oppressive bourgeoisie and other exploiting classes, laying the foundation for a higher and sustainable state of society for the people, that is, socialism. We recognize the need to carry forward the cultural revolution. As history teaches us, that revolution in the economic and political sphere alone is insufficient if our mode of thinking remains unchanged. We must carry out our utmost efforts in attaining the people's demands to achieve victory. In this regard, we, in behalf of Paaralang Jose Maria Season, would like to thank all our viewers who participated in this activity. Warmest greetings to ILTS, artists, and concerned artists of the Philippines for making this meaningful activity possible. Thank you. Kaya't huwag isipin, wala tayong mag
nagagawa Kung nagkakaisa, tagumpay ay makukuha Quiero 